Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I am Geneva. This is Geneva in general. And I would like for you to like, share, subscribe and comment. So I've been thinking about some things, guys, since watching the Connecticut Sun just completely obliterate uh, the Indiana Fever yesterday in the yesterday's uh, game one of the playoffs. And it had me thinking that Coach Christie's sides, Caitlin Clark, the Indiana Fever as a whole, they have no contingency plan. They have no map, okay? Again, this is from an outside looking in, okay? Coach Christy Sides, the way she was coaching, she was outcoached, okay? Stephanie White, head coach Stephanie White of the Connecticut Sun, she outcoached Christy Sides, and the Connecticut Sun outplayed, they outshot, they outperformed the Indiana Fever. And I think I know why. So today, guys, earlier today at work, okay, I, I'm an active duty airman, okay? I'm in the Air Force. I had to just, I had to attend a mandatory training, okay? I had to go to a training that talked about mitigating risk as an airman, right? And when we think about risk, again, like it was a safety training, but it's not all about safety, right? For example, to mitigate risk, let's say like, when I go into work tomorrow, instead of 10 airmen showing up, three of them get the flu or something, and like I only have six or seven airmen, I have to have, they'll say, you know, Geneva, like, what is your contingency plan as the shift leader of your shift? What are you going to do? What do you put into place to contend with that risk like how do you mitigate that again like you everything is not in your control but how do you at least mitigate risk right what plan will you put in place that you know can get the mission done right we can get these these planes to fly even though only seven of your 10 airmen showed up to work today and during that training guys this is how obsessed with i i've become with the WNBA. i was like christy size did not have a contingency plan when the connecticut sun defeated the indiana fever in yesterday's game of game one at the playoffs and it, and it just, it just, it kind of exposed not only Christy Sides, but Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever organization as a whole. Coach Christy Sides needs to read up on either the 48 Laws of Power or the, a book by the same author called The Art of War, right? Or The Art of Seduction. That's another good book too, but I don't have the, the physical copy of The Art of War. But again, like, you should read it. The way that Stephanie White handles things, and the way that she coached her players at the Connecticut Sun, something tells me that woman read something about the 48 Laws of Power in order the art of uh of the art of war because again it's like the art of war right when you go into basketball right in the w this is kind of like a war right you got the generals okay those are the head coaches and they're training their soldiers like, aka the basketball players these women who play basketball on their team when you go into war you're never supposed to go into war first of all this is what this is how you know that coach chrissy sides again like this is her first time being in the playoffs again like they're a younger team compared to the Connecticut Sun. Indiana Fever, that is. And Coach Christy Sides just does not have the experience quite uh, like, you know, uh, Stephanie White does at the Connecticut Sun. Again, not to make excuses for her, but again, I am tired of people bashing Christy Sides. And I know I'm a hypocrite because I'll be, I'll be dragging Spoon, Coach Spoon, at Chicago Sky, but that's neither here nor there. First thing in the art of war, and it also says this in the 48 Laws of Power, okay, with, with in any order, right? You can never, ever underestimate your opponent, okay? You always have to go into a battle, go into a war, with a healthy level, again, just a healthy level of respect for that opponent. Now, imagine you're a boxer, right? We get into the ring together. I don't know, maybe, you know, I'm smaller than you or you're smaller than me. And I'm like, you know, I'm just kind of like, you know, just arrogant, clowning, like I drop my hands. I'm like, what are you going to do? Like I got, I'm six foot three. I got reach over you, you're like five, eight, five, nine. And what happens when you drop your hands, right? To showboat and to display your arrogance against your opponent, right? Because you, in your mind, they're weaker than you. You've seen the last game, the last stats, the last fight. <clears throat> They may have got knocked out and you drop your hands. And then what happens when that smaller, weaker opponent that you've been clowning just knocks you out? OK, you have to have a heavy, a healthy level of respect for your opponent. A lot of again, a lot of Indiana Fever fans, they requested, they said they want to contend with the Connecticut Sun. But again, it's like that you do your research. Again, when you go into the art of war, not only do you what, must you have a healthy level of respect for your opponent, you have to what too? Study your opponent. Do you not understand? Like when you go into war, you got to study your enemies, know their strengths, know their weaknesses, see their opportunities, see that talent. Okay. Again, it seems like Christy Sides, again, like they did not, like, do y'all not know where y'all are? Okay. Caitlin Clark literally left that game with a black eye. Ty Harris, the Connecticut Sun, she had a boot on, I believe, on like her, her lower right leg. I think it's her ankle. I'm, I'm not sure. Alyssa Thomas, she hurt her right uh, leg again. I thought it was her hip. It was, I believe it was her right leg again. This is the W, okay, baby, we're not in the Girl Scouts, okay? They did not do their proper research. Connecticut Sun, that's like, if not the most physical team, it's one of the top fives. Now again, I think Phoenix Mercury are bullies, the New York Liberties that can be bullies. It's some, you know, not bullies, but like they kind of can play very harsh and aggressively, okay? Even some members in the Chicago Sky. 
you don't really see like that level of uh, like hits and stuff and like say the DC Mystics, the Los Angeles Sparks, the Seattle Storm. But the freaking Connecticut Sun, are you kidding me? Alyssa Thomas, she's six foot two, 203 pounds. And Alyssa Smith of the Indiana people, she said, I believe it was either this year or last year, she said that she wasn't even trying to take a charge at uh, uh, Alyssa Thomas of the Connecticut Sun. She said, Alyssa Thomas hit me so hard. Okay, this is an interview of her say, talking about this when she was playing video games, okay? Now again, Alyssa Smith stands at six foot four, 185 pounds. Alyssa Thomas is six two, 203 pounds. Melissa said that Alyssa Thomas hit her so hard, she literally flung her on the ground. She said she was in pain for days, almost shattered her rib cage. So again, it's like, again, you got to study your opponents, Coach Christie. And again, I'm not trying to be harsh. And like, she gets enough criticism. Everybody has been trending since yesterday all over my Twitter, okay? I'm in like, the, you know, WNBA Twitter. So Christy Sides, Caitlin Clark, DJ Carrington, Melissa Smith, everybody getting dragged, okay? Everybody. The, the smoke is for everybody. But again, it's like Connecticut Sun is a very physical team. Okay, they're an older team, they're more experienced, more mature. Um, you know, they have more experience in the playoffs, okay? The playoff intensity, as you can see, that intensity level in the playoffs, you don't see that as much or as, as you know, intense in the regular season. Again, we're not in the Girl Scouts, this is the WNBA. Playoff season. Just like how they want to win the trophy, they want to win the championship, so do they. Any other people want to win, so does Connecticut Sun. Okay, and I'm not, you know, excusing dirty play or anything like that. And specifically, speaking of that, I want to insert this clip, okay, a clip, this photo. Look at DJ Carrington nails, okay? I'm in the military, as you can see. Hers are about the same length as mine. You can't even see my tips, like, underneath, right? I don't like long nails anyway. To me, it's just unhygienic. But um, it's out of regs. I can't wear acrylics, but those are her natural nails, okay? So, again, I can't confirm nor deny if that swipe that she took at her face was, you know, intentional or not. But, again, like, again, I'm not doing tit for tat, but let's just be honest. Caitlin Clark also knocked her eye contact here out of her head when she smacked it upside the face. And honestly, like, this is how I knew that not only, first of all, I've been known this entire season, DJ Carrington is a dog. She a whole Rottweiler. This is when I knew Connecticut Sun was going to win. When DJ Carrington didn't miss a beat, she, she kneeled down, picked up her dirty contact off that dirty basketball floor, and popped it right in with no saline solution, no liquid, no water, no spit, no nothing. I was like, oh, yes. Again, like, y'all got to study your opponents. Look at the material. You got Alyssa Thomas, the one of Bonner. You got freaking DJ Carrington. She is a defensive nightmare. That woman be locking people up like she's an officer. Again, like that is Officer Carrington. And she runs the Institutional Corrections Facility for Women at the facility of Carrington. She locked people up all the time. Again, it's like a, it, does, it does. Some people, like, you know, it'll appear that Caitlin Clark and DJ Carrington, they got beef. No, y'all don't understand. Like, again, it's not about the hate when y'all talk about race and politics. Listen, if you never played a sport, if you've never been passionate about basketball or anything, you simply don't understand. Again, this is not the Girl Scouts. Yes, some things are going to be said. Some things are going to be done. It's not going to be nice. It's not going to be ladylike. It's not going to be, you know, cutesy or very demure. Again, I'm not excusing violence, okay? Or, you know, people acting crazy. But it's like, I don't call any women thugs. If you look at my entire, even the less of times, like to me, out of all the players in W, the way she literally be brutalizing people, and like she has like no remorse. She almost paralyzed Angel Reese back in May. And I mean, like she walked up like she didn't care. If anybody should have that thug term, to me, it's Alyssa Thomas, but at the same time, I respect it because you know what? If you look into her past, okay, if you actually take the time to know these women, these players, Alyssa Thomas said it was her own mom who taught her how to play dirty. Again, like it is what it is. That's just how she was raised. So again, in the art of war, you got to study your opponents. You must know your enemy. Okay, because again, like they, they, they knew y'all. Connecticut Sun knew the Indiana Fever like the back of their hand. And that's how you know Stephanie White. She must read the 48 Laws of Power and the Art of War because why? This is brilliant. Somebody actually commented below on my... um. My channel, my, my previous channel when I covered that game, to put Dewana Bonner on Caitlin Clark, again, that length. Dewana Bonner is like, what, six foot six? She got a wingspan of like seven foot four. That was genius. And then to put DJ, DJ Nate Carrington on Kelsey Mitchell, okay? She's a bit taller than her, a little bit stronger, I believe. But again, like that agility, that speed, that confidence, that, that physicality that they both are not shy, they don't shy away from. That was, again, that's a genius move. Again, like, it's like, it's like uh, moving around pieces on a chessboard. That's exactly what Stephanie White did. She knows that, again, like she studied her opponent. She knows that Indiana Fever, uh, and I know this too, that Caitlin Clark is a threat. She's an incredible shooter, especially with a three-point shot. Kelsey Mitchell is an incredible three-shooter, two-point shooter. They're all incredible passers. Okay, she's not afraid of physicality getting into the paint and getting to that rim. She'll attack the rim and attack any of your players. She knows that, so hey, put DJ Carrington on her. She knows that, you know, Lexi Hall. Incredible, incredible defender. Even though the, the Indiana Fever as a whole, they need work when it comes to the defensive line. Lexi Hall is carrying them defensively. Alyssa Smith, 
I ain't got nothing to say, okay? Aaliyah Boston again. She's another incredible shooter. Again, those are the splash sisters. I call the Indiana and people girls out of I don't call nobody, no other team this. I say Lexi Hall, uh, Caitlin Clark, Leah Boston, and Kelsey Mitchell. Those are the splash sisters of the Indiana Fever, okay? But again, with her genius, her brilliance, and her, her technique, her skills, and her experience, Stephanie White was able to read her opponent. She studied the enemy, the Indiana Fever, and she literally made adjustments. You got to do that. And that's what Christy Sides, again, I don't know what she did, but apparently from my eyes looking in, and my own analysis and assessments, it appears as though like she just kind of like they just walked in thinking like, yeah, they're just going to give us the, the W, right? Because we're the fever. And like, no, it don't work like that. Again, maybe this is the W, not the Girl Scouts. Okay, you see how what's going on? Everybody getting hurt and injured. The Connecticut Sun is not going to just let y'all kill them. They're not going to just go down without a fight. Okay, it's going to get bloody. Tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday. Game uh, two on Wednesday, who knows what's going to happen? Again, but they, they, they got that experience now. But we're going to see who's going to make the correct adjustments. Again, when anything that lives on this earth, right, you must adapt or you will die, okay? It's just simple evolution. The Indiana Fever, again, the way that the Connecticut Sun destroyed them in yesterday's game for game one in the playoffs, they made them appear to be a one-trick pony team, especially like Caitlin Clark. Again, Caitlin Clark is really, really known. Again, like they studied that enemy. They studied their opponent. Caitlin Clark is known to make uh threes with no with no problem right she's she's great at you know going at that three-point line even forget the three-point line she'll go even behind the three-point line to the logo paint in the middle of the freaking court and put it up a three but guess what dewana bonner said no not today stephanie white had dewana bonner again she's six foot six her wingspan is crazy she didn't even really have to hop she blocked caitlin clark's shot and she would like force her to get away from the three uh, point line caitlin clark is known again like they, they've studied her she's known to and I'm saying approach the three-point line, like make it, make it look like she's about to run uh, through the three-point line and go up to the paint and put in a layup. But then like she'll like stop, run it back around, reroute, go back to that three-point line and just easily splash on, on that opponent's head. Dewana Bonner would not allow none of that. I believe like, like okay, Caitlin Clark played horribly yesterday, okay? Um, I think she was like one for nine in the three-point shots. Even Kelsey Mitchell, they put so much pressure. They literally contained them girls. They smothered them girls to the point where they just like they, there was nothing they could do. And honestly, Lexi Hall was keeping them in the game, but I believe she had like three foul shots called in like by the second quarter or something. I, I can't really remember the specifics. You know, Christy Sides, she got, you know, afraid for her. I'm not sure that, again, like, I can't say if that's the right call or, the, or, the, or a bad call because, again, like, if she would have kept Lexi Hall in, she would have definitely got them more points, but it's like at what cost? What if Lexi Hall just continued uh, getting fouls called on her? And, like, let's say that like, she gets a game suspension or something like a flagrant call, you know, which is all just ridiculous. Again, it'll be interesting to see who's going to make the right adaptations come Wednesday for Game 2 when it comes to Connecticut Sun versus the Indiana Fever because right now, Connecticut Sun, they're showing like why they are they were ranked number two all year all season round, but then, now I believe they're, they're ranked number three. They're the third seed spot. But again, like maybe Christy Sides, again, like she'll look at some film. She'll see where uh, the Indiana Fever needs to, you know, make that those adjustments, those corrections study the enemy being the Connecticut Sun and actually outperform them, like not just mirror them, but study their opponents. Again, it's like playing chess or boxing. You kind of got to anticipate your opponent's next move. And then also while you anticipate that next move, you have to counter that. So if you're in the ring, you know that they're going to keep jabbing with the right, move around, hit them with the left, you know, throw them off. You got to do something. You can't just keep doing the same things. Again, like they have to adapt. Andy and the Fever, again, they're right with the three-point line. They're, they're full of shooters. Okay, I call them the splashes for a reason. But they must adapt or else they will die.